Elizabeth Taylor was only 12 years old when she achieved international fame in the 1944 classic National Velvet. If anybody ever sells a pie, I might as well die. By the 1950s, the London-born American was box office magic, ranking as one of the top 10 movie stars of the decade. She has always been a star, it's, so it's hard to know what made her a star. I would say originally it was her ast astonishing beauty and sensitivity. While the two-time Academy Award winner was a success in Hollywood, Taylor's private life was a disaster. Ill health plagued her throughout her life, while personal happiness always seemed to be just a marriage away. She was a goddess ravaged by hell. Elizabeth Taylor's first marriage to Nikki Hilton ended in divorce after only a few months. By 1952, Taylor had married actor Michael Wilding, and in 1957, she married producer Mike Todd. I don't think there's any doubt that if Mike Todd had lived, he would still have been her husband. But Todd died in a plane crash. I said I'd try anything once. Mm -hmm. Ever try common sense? Only in desperation. Then a widow, Taylor found comfort and scandal in the arms of singer Eddie Fisher. At the time, he was married to her best friend, Debbie Reynolds. But I will never be free of you. The movie Cleopatra proved golden for Taylor. She was the first star to be paid a million dollars for a film, and she met the man she would marry twice, Richard yeah, Burton. I am stuck with this. Drop this. Go on, Mom. They were very much in love with each other. In fact, I think they really remained in love with each other always. When he died, I wrote her a sympathy note because to me, she would always be his wife. In 1976, Elizabeth Taylor married her sixth husband, Virginia Senator John Warner. But by 1983, that marriage had ended, and Taylor checked herself into the Betty Ford Clinic for alcohol dependency. Sorry, honey. Things go look around here every time I'm away. After the death of actor and close friend Rock Hudson in 1985, Taylor focused her attention on AIDS research. Each day in this world, 5,000 people become infected with HIV. During the 80s, Taylor became friends with pop icon Michael Jackson after she attended one of his concerts. At a 1989 awards show, she introduced him as the King of Pop, the title that stuck with him for the rest of his life. Taylor was a staunch supporter of Jackson when he faced child molestation charges, saying Michael's love of children is one of the purest things I've ever seen. Their friendship continued until Jackson's death in June 2009. Upon hearing the news, Taylor released a statement saying, My heart, my mind are broken. I loved Michael with all my soul, and I can't imagine life without him. Taylor's 1991 wedding to construction worker Larry Fortensky was held at Michael Jackson's home under intense media scrutiny. Taylor and Fortensky met during her second stay at the Betty Ford Clinic. Elizabeth Taylor's passion. As her film demands lessened, Taylor turned her attention to promoting her line of perfumes. She continued her work for AIDS research and in 1997 attended this 65th birthday bash in Hollywood to help raise money for her favorite cause. Just remember, you sent for me. I didn't send for you. She was down to earth. She was a wonderful mother. She has a lot of very refined qualities that always struck me that she she was good and generous in the past few years she's battled a brain tumor a skin cancer and heart problems from her causes to her career from her loves to her losses over the years elizabeth taylor lived and died a legend rick fulbaum fox news